This is Brandon D'Alamonte with the City of Pittsburgh's Office of Special Events, bringing you part three in the final part of our online display, Teeny Harris, the man behind the lens. And again, I have Charlene Fogey Barnett on from the Carnegie Museum of Art, and she's going to talk a little bit more about the final category of our display, which is the artistry of Teeny Harris. And now, Charlene, I know you told me a story uh, about how Teeny was able to kind of do uh, skin tone, uh, figure out skin tones with his camera at a time when that technology just wasn't really prevalent. So can you tell us a little bit more about that story specifically and um, a little bit more about Teeny's artistry and what made him special as not just a photographer, but an artist? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let's say you're lining up five or six people and they may have different skin complexion tones. Some people are, are browner skin, some people are lighter skin. And in the developing process, some of that's gonna fade out. Someone's features may fade or they may, um, or you'd overdevelop the, the shot and it would um, be so dark you wouldn't see a curl or you know someone's ear or whatever. But Teeny took his actual bare hands, his children told us, and put his fingers down in the developing pans when the negatives were being developed and put his fingers over certain faces so that some of the images would develop and then um, he, they developed to a certain point and then he'd lift his hands off and let the let the process continue and um, so everyone had a fair shot of looking like they actually looked without bleeding out or fading out and I think that that's really responsible of him um, and I think that's why the photos are so great for the decades that he shot, because there were a lot of photographers, but they weren't paying attention to something like that. And you can see that as an example in this photo, people are in different skin tones, but you can see their features clearly, right? But how do you think that he learned this? Where did, I know Woogie bought him the camera or, or loaned him money for the camera. Um, but where do you, where did he learn this? How did he figure out not only how to do great photography, but also the artistry part of it is figuring out what makes a good shot and processes like uh, figuring out skin tones. That's just incredible to me. That's, that's what was so great about Teeny. I mean, um, he had a grandfather who had been interested in photography, so he may have had some exposure to it, but he was, um, as he explained to us, clearly that he was self-taught. So a lot of this was trial and error. And I think it was also the frustration of, he's not just taking pictures. He's, these were going to be reproduced in um, the newspaper and people's lives, their image was going to be there. Let's say someone graduated from um, college or with an advanced degree. The other press uh, in the city were, were not going to run that information, but the Pittsburgh Courier was. And so Teeny wanted to make sure that people were, you could tell who they were and they had the dignity of being represented properly. And so he worked hard to, to kind of, you know, make this one of his signature um, abilities. And, um, and it's consistent. You know, you really don't see a, a Teeny Harris photo that is not a clear quality photo, even if it's even if the subjects are doing something else, or there's some sort of degradation on the film or negative from age, um, but the content you don't see mistakes or you know oddities. You don't see overexposures. Um, he just he worked hard to teach himself, and when you're shooting as much as he did, I'm sure you know. Yeah, he absolutely. Got really good at it. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah and he, I think that's why this display was so important because obviously people, a lot of people might be familiar with some of the great photography that he put out on assignment with the courier. And there's a lot of photos that are, um, you know, known all over the world. Uh, but we were really able to focus in on some of those photos that teeny is really, his artistry is really on display and some of the things that he's able to capture that he personally enjoyed or personally felt connected to. Uh, so I think we've, put together a, a truly unique display this year. I think you did too. Um, and I think people will be excited to see the various types of photos. We tried to work together to make kind of a cross section of teeny. 
not just one subject, not just city government, which he has a lot of photos of that. Um, he has generations of people, um, the, um, um, the Lavelles, and, um, and we have a city councilman now who is a Lavelle, but we have his parents who I grew up knowing as well, you know, in photos, his mother and his father. We have so many people who are uh, part of the city's history that doing things in spaces you didn't know they, they did, playing golf, women playing golf in Shenley Park, um, the black golfers and the black duffers, um, uh, tennis players, um, anything, skaters, anything you can think of, Teeny was shooting it. And see, because sometimes he was on an assignment, but sometimes he was just, let's say in between something, uh, one of his, his nicest photos is of some water running down the street and it's a big storm and it's very gray and musty like Pittsburgh was, you know, because of the steel mills and because of the weather conditions. But the way he shot this photo and the street goes downhill and the lighting um, <laughs> it makes it so beautiful, even though it's, uh, you know, kind of dark, mm -hmm. you know, shot. Um, he captured one photo that's in uh, the display that of a line of cars where there's just a line of cars by soldiers and sailors. And there's the big old cars that, you know, the size of boats. And they're all backed up to the sidewalk. And um, there are about eight of them, nine of them. But one has a trunk open. And it just is a very interesting shot. Um, so he, maybe he was going to soldiers and sailors to shoot something on assignment, but that shot was something he took. And those to me are the ones are uh, that, especially uh, European cities like to request for use in their magazines or whatnot. Um, the different types and styles of photography he took. And then of course, um, he is documenting black history in a way that no one else really has. Uh, no one with the number of photos in one region. Um, you know, Teeny wasn't shooting all over the country really. He did leave sometimes. He's been to Washington DC or Virginia a little bit, but those were one-offs. Those were one weekend maybe or whatever. But the majority of what you're seeing when you see civil rights giants like Mar Martin Luther King Jr. and Rosa Parks and um, Thurgood Marshall and um, all of these people, they're, they're actually in the city of Pittsburgh about a block away from the courier offices. Um, when you are seeing rallies and marches and protests and whatnot, um, or a photo, for instance, of a group of women of mixed race, about 10 women who are from the 1950s and they're taking a tally on a chalkboard of how many African-American uh, women are working in big department stores downtown. And, you know, these are the kinds of, of things that people don't necessarily see. They don't, they don't know about. Um, I think that's the, the, the really important thing about Teeny is, um, you know, we know the big hits as, as Americans, as people in the world were taught the big hits about the African-American community. There's um, the, um, uh, the obvious story of slavery, what went on there, and then the Reformation period, and then Jim Crow, and then um, civil rights movement. And along with that comes uh, the black nationalist movements. And then we're kind of, you know, in, a, in an interesting kind of pause. And then the Obama era and now Black Lives Matter. So we have people know those because that's what's in the history books. That's what's being taught to students. Um, but all the in-between connective stories as to how did Martin Luther King Jr. become the national civil uh, symbol for civil rights? How did people sustain 
um, their homes and, and eat um, on such low income jobs? What inventive ways do people make to um, keep their, um, their family and their kids uh, safe and protected? What kind of silent protests did they do when they couldn't, when they had no other choice and they didn't know what else to do? So just wrote their own sign to say, you know, conditions here, living conditions, let's say, are not good. Um, all of that is what Tini captured. And so he's the proof and he's the, he's the connective fiber between the big hits. In fact, we even have a photo and we'll talk about that when we talk about the gallery exhibition that we have here at the museum. But we even have someone who was born in slavery um, photographed. So <laughs> he's it's taking incredible. us that very moment, the beginning of our lives as Americans in this country of color, all the way through uh, photography of civil rights movements and, and black nationalism that would look almost like, you know, a Black Lives Matter rally today. And again, the display that Charlene and myself are referring to is an in-person display that you can see in downtown Pittsburgh at the City County Building. You can also follow us at PGH Events Office on Facebook and Twitter, where we'll be releasing content all month long, including videos and more interviews with Charlene, as well as photos from the Teeny Harris archives. And if you have any questions about the display, feel free to reach out at PGH Events Office. And we also encourage you to visit the Carnegie Museum of Arts Teeny Harris display entitled In Sharp Focus, where you get the other half of the story about the work that Teeny Harris did in the community. So Charlene, if anyone has questions about the Carnegie Museum of Art display, what's the best way to reach you? You can always contact the museum and ask for the Teeny Harris office. Uh, that's where I'll be. Uh, my phone number is 412-622-1012 for my direct line. And uh, I think we'll add um, my email uh, so you can see it. It's a long one, so <laughs> we'll write it out for you. But um, yeah, just contact the museum and um, we're happy to work with you in any way we can. All right, Charlene, thanks so much. Thank you, Brandon.